The garden really is here to highlight how important plants are, not just to us as human beings, but also to the, you know, the global environment. And if we can, I guess, encourage people to engage with plants on any level, in one way or another when they come to the garden, whether that be appreciating how beautiful they are, or how useful they are, or even the medicines, or food crops, or, or whatever really, then we're doing our job. It's unlike another garden in that it's actually, it's curated like a museum um, might be curated. So all the plants are actually accession, have a unique identification number. It means that we know where those plants have come from, whether they've been collected from the wild, whether they're a part of a conservation project. And it's that associated information that actually makes these collections more worthwhile for teaching and research. Today we're looking at plants that are important for human health. We've got to see what kind of mood they're in when they arrive and how much they've been sold this as a science trip because sometimes if they think they're coming for a jolly and I can launch into the science straight away they're a bit shocked so I have to kind of gauge the mood fairly early on and, uh, and then just kind of take it from there. <laughs> when we started growing vegetables in the garden it was basically for demonstration purposes so we set aside quite a large amount of ground for them to grow in, uh, started growing and then realised that we would have a substantial harvest. We got in touch with the Oxford Food Bank and we've got some very kind volunteers who come in and harvest for us once a week which takes some of the time pressure off us. Um, I'm at the moment root feeding so we do that this time of year once a week. We look after plants, they grow, and then eventually they set seeds and new plants grow. So yeah, I like that actually, although sometimes it's sad. <laughs> If you try and throw one of our normal climbing lines, they're quite heavy um, and just the weight of the rope reduces how far they can go. So you're limited to probably, I don't know, 30 foot maybe. Whereas throw lines, they can go, well, kind of however high you like really. You tie the rope onto the end of the throw line and then you pull the throw line up, which then pulls the big climbing line up. And once you've got that first rope installed, you can then access the whole tree. Most tree surgeons don't necessarily get an opportunity to climb trees this size every day. Um, and you know we only tend to really climb big trees here, which is quite nice. <laughs>